Good afternoon. Welcome to Wednesday Worship from St. Mark's. As always, it is good to be together. It is good to take time in the middle of the week to center our hearts, our minds, our lives in the one who loves us and holds us close. This uh, week we have received news of some big changes that are going to be uh, unfolding for us here at St. Mark's. Even in the midst of a pa pandemic, when things seem to be kind of shut down and closed off, uh, life goes on. Opportunities are offered and embraced. Pastor Ivy and I both wanted to be with you this evening to um, share and to hold this news together. So, Pastor Ivy. I've been with you all now for over nine years. Nine years of joys and challenges. Nine years of wondering what God is up to on this corner of our world. Walking with you during your good times and your bad times. You walking beside me during major milestones of my life. Nine years. And so it is with mixed emotions, both joy and excitement, but also sorrow, I share with you that I will be resigning from my position at St. Mark's. Um, as your associate pastor, because I've been called as the solo pastor to Living Waters Lutheran Church in Lino Lakes, Minnesota. And I'll start with them in July. And so it's an exciting opportunity to, for me to, to go and use the skills and gifts and leadership that I have, uh, that have been fostered among you here. And so my final um, Sunday with you all will be May 31st. Now, Given the fact that we are in the midst of a time of social distancing, we're still trying to figure out what that celebration is going to look like. But know that there will be details coming so that we can say our goodbyes in, in the best possible way, knowing that God holds all of us in the midst of transition. And so with that, let's take a deep breath and, and begin worship. Gracious and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, you have joined us into one living body. We thank you for the bonds of love that form us. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives together. Work within and among us. Confront us with your tenderness and set us on fire. Enable us by your spirit to walk together in unity and love and purpose, to uphold one another by word and example, and to live in faithful obedience to your will. By the mercy and justice we show one another, may we reach out to a watching and waiting world. In our work and worship, may your glory be revealed and your name be praised. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my The, passage, the scripture passage for us to focus on tonight comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. And this is how the story goes. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there, was a, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided tongues as a fire appeared on them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Alamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jew and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Here ends the reading for this night. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I was growing up, I was blessed to have all four of my grandparents um, who gave me gifts of knowledge and love. My grandpa Langer was full of wisdom and faith, which I've quoted often in my sermons to all of you over the years. My grandma Langer loved us in a different way. She loved each of us by baking our favorite pies for Thanksgiving and teaching us the secret family recipe to homemade pretzels. My grandpa Borkstrom, on the other hand, was a quieter soul, but he had a twinkle in his eye and was quick to laugh and engage people in conversation. I loved them all, but it was my grandma Borkstrom who had a deep and abiding place in my heart even after a decade since her death. I was her little girl, the nickname she gave to me early on because I was the only granddaughter amongst seven grandchildren. And I was special in her eyes because of that. We had this incredibly close re relationship, one that I depended on for comfort and consolation, for, for clarity in times of confusion, and for confidence. Um, and all of that because she loved me so unconditionally. She was my go-to person because I always knew she understood me. And if she didn't, she was very quick to ask questions, to help her understand what was going on so that she could help me move forward. She just got me. She never judged. She held space for me to figure out life. And frankly, she just held me until I understood myself and then let me free into the world to bear that love and mercy that I had experienced. My grandma understood me and loved me and made me feel worthy. And because of that, I had the confidence to move through this life, the life that God has blessed me with. Now, I hope we all know people who are like my grandma in our lives, who spoke love into our lives, who believed in us beyond what we could see, who understood who we were and stood by us. We know these people, right? These wisdom bearers, these givers of grace, these sources of what unconditional love looks like. But we also understand that for some, it is a moment in time. For some, it is a lifetime. There's a familiar poem that speaks to this piece of our relationships. It's called A Reason, A Season, and A Lifetime. You've maybe heard it before. It goes like this. People come into our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. When you figure out when, which one it is, you will know what to, how to act with that person. When someone is in your life for a reason, it's usually to meet a need you have expressed. They come to assist you through a difficulty, to provide you with guidance and support to aid you, um, to aid you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. 
They seem like a godsend because that is in fact what they are. Some people come into our lives for a season because your turn has come to share and grow and learn. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it, it's real, but only for a season. Lifetime relationships teach you a lifetime of lessons, things that you build upon in order to have a solid relationship, a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person, and put what you have learned into use in your other relationships across all the areas of your life. A reason, a season, a lifetime. Now we understand people come and go. People die like my grandmother. They're called away, they move on, and so do we, right? And yet what remains is the love shared, the confidence given, the space held, the joy multiplied, the lessons learned, the support and guidance given. These gifts enable our lives to be rejuvenated and revived so that we can bear witness to what is love, and especially what God's love looks like. Now that doesn't mean that it's an easy path or that the path is smooth. Goodbyes in whatever form they take, um, take in mean change is present and uncertainty is coming to bear. And yet again, God's love is translated, translated into the moment to sustain and support our steps. The disciples were still reeling from the emotional outcomes of Jesus' crucifixion and death to his resurrected presence being among them in this bodily form. As they come to understand all that he had taught them, all that they had witnessed, all that they now receive, they are blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the guide with whom will walk with them just as Jesus did as he ascends now to the Father. In the midst of this, in the midst of the, conf from the confusion comes clarity, from despair comes direction, from misunderstanding and apprehension comes a word of understanding and confirmation from the simplest of interactions. The Holy Spirit reveals to the disciples and gives them the power to speak the words that the gathered community can understand in such a way that their hearts become in sync with God's plans as they experience the unconditional love that Christ reveals. And what does the Holy Spirit empower them to do right out the gate? The very first thing that they are able to do, what they are moved to do, is to speak in the many languages of God's people about the works of God the teachings and sacrifice of Christ, and the unconditional love that God offers, a love that is translated into every life, every language, and is unstoppable. With the Holy Spirit, they are able to translate God's love into the world, which the whole gathered community can under understand. Now, I find this utterly amazing, pun intended, the first act of the Holy Spirit among the people is to bring about understanding, to speak in such a way that no one is left out, that no one must depend on another to translate the word of God, but instead, the word is spoken in their native tongue, in the words that they have known since birth and yet now carry a far greater meaning and purpose. Words within the word which now ignite their hearts to believe and to act and to trust that they are loved beyond measure and certainly not alone as they walk this path through life. The Holy Spirit holds space for them and holds space for us to experience God's love and work through all that Jesus has taught so that we can navigate this life with a reason in good season as we walk the path of a lifetime with, in relationship with God. When I think about my grandma, a smile comes across my face, and my heart feels stronger knowing that I was so deeply loved and understood by her, 
and that her presence continues to give me the courage to see beyond this moment. The Holy Spirit has been placing people in our lives, like my grandma, like the disciples, like the people that surround us in times of joy and of challenge, across the generations, to point to the way that God lo God's love is being empowered in the world, to the ways in which we are loved and cared for, and in turn are called to love and care and speak of God's love in ways that are accessible and tangible along the paths we walk. The Holy Spirit, Spirit gives us this capability to take what we have learned, the good and the bad, and apply it to how we navigate this moment. The people in our lives will come and go for a multitude of reasons, but the love we shared and the love, that, uh, the love of God, the forgiveness of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit will bring understanding and direction, which remains present forever. Trust that you are known and loved, and that the Holy Spirit is near to whisper the words you need this day, to feel loved, and to know which way to turn, and most importantly, to know that you can bear God's love into the lives of those around you in your native tongue. Thanks be to God. Amen. Spirit, spirit of gentleness.
See you. 